Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put a step-by-step -step guide together today, showing you how to replace the PCV valve on this 2015 Golf R. Really common issue on these, uh, so I thought I'd uh, share the video with you all, see if it can help somebody else replace one. It's a fairly straightforward job to do. So, um, Just before we get into the video, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, if you just click the red subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on any future content. And I'll just show you, we're using all genuine parts today. We've got the new PCV valve there. You see, it all comes with a new seal. It comes with a new bolt, so all built into it as well. So, If you check the description below, I've put links to all the part numbers and all the tools used. We're actually replacing the inlet manifold on this one today as well for the intake flap runner sensor. You can't get this, it's a really common issue and you can't get the sensor separately, you have to replace the manifold. Uh, but if we just take the cover off, I'll just show you. where the PCV is located as well. So you can just see it here on the top. Um, but we'll get into the video now and start taking that off. To start with, we've got seven bolts holding it on. Then there's a separate one just at the top there, the little Torx bolts there. So we'll get them eight screws out to start with and go from there. And you're gonna want a little Torx 27 socket for all the screws on this one. Yeah, now we're slacking a few of the screws off now, uh, but if you can just see, zoom that in right, uh, two of the screws are actually a bit obstructed by the, the two coils here. So we're going to take them two coils, just lift them coils up out of the way slightly. To do that, all you need to do is just take the two connectors off, just a little push clip there on that. And then that one there, and then the connectors will pop back. You've got to take the 10 mils off the top 10 mil on each one to take the little wire off there and then the bottom one will release the coil as well so we're just going to slacken all them off now we'll probably have to pull this uh, connector off all as one because they're all sort of linked together quite tightly so but if we get all them undone we should be able to just pull the coils slightly out of the way and that will allow us to get the bolts out fully so get them out now So now they're out of the way, we'll be able to pull the two coils up. They might just be a little bit tight. Now if you just place them in the order you took them out, just so you can put them back in the same place as well. Out of the way, we should be able to get the other bolts out. Right, so we've got a bit more room now, and every bolt's loose. The next thing we're going to do is just this little pipe on here has got like a one time crimped fitting on it, so we're just going to cut that off with a pair of uh, snippers and then we can release that there. And we've just got one more connection there that we'll have to get off as well. Right, so we've got the pipe off now. The body itself is all loose. All we're left with now is this little connection at the back here 
And if I just show you on the new one, it's got these little pegs at the back which just lock it into place. If we just lift it up gently, we should normally, if you just twist it a little bit, it just um, pops it out. So we'll get that out now. Right, so we've got the old valve off there and um, just see where it situates there the next thing i'm going to do it's not bad at all really on here because it's so it's not a very, very old vehicle so um, we're just going to give that a clean round with a rag and um, just make sure there's no debris out on there before we pop the new one back on uh, so the new one's there genuine volkswagen one uh, but i'll put a link in the description below to the part number and uh, where you can get one from so I think you can get some aftermarket versions, but um, the genuine one's not too bad of money to be fair, so I thought it'd be better to put a genuine one on. Uh, but give this a quick clean round now with a rag, and then we'll pop the new one into place. Yeah, so that's all cleaned up now, and just locate the new one into place. Just clip the back in now. The next thing we're going to do is just put a new hose clip on the pipe there, and we'll slide the pipe in as we're, as we're sort of positioning it into place. Just so everything's a little bit tight, so it just makes it a bit easier. So that's back located down now. Next, we're just going to run the seven main bolts up. Uh, we haven't got a proper torque setting, but they do only need a light nip on them, so just be a bit careful not to over tighten them. Run them all down gently. Now we'll just give them all a little nip. Now that all the main bolts are done up, we'll just put the last, the eighth one in the top there and we'll nip the new hose clip up as well. So the PCB valve's all back into place as it should be now. Everything's nipped up. I'm just going to put the coils back in, put the connectors back on. Um, just make sure you put the coils back in the same place they come out of. It's not massively, it's not mega essential, but it's just for practice to put them back in the same hole. Yeah, so that's everything back together on this one now. All we've got to do is put the engine cover back on. Uh, but there's no codes to clear out of it. Um, but yeah, it's just, as you can see, it's quite a straightforward job, really. But I thought, I thought I'd share the video if anyone fancies having a go themselves to save some money. Um, I've got some more videos on the Golf R as an engine service. And then, so we're going to go on to replace the inlet manifold here next as well. So there'll be another video on that. Uh, but hope the video helped. If it did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time.